Bonjour, Liz. How are you today? Oh, hello. I'm great, thank you. How are you? Thank you. It's sunny today, right? Both in Paris and London, so we're really lucky. It is beautiful. It is the most gorgeous day. It's proper blue skies and sunshine, and it's actually quite warm. Yeah, we really, uh, we really appreciate that, right? To you who's listening or watching, at least we can have a little bit of sun in this crazy transitional times, which doesn't feel too bad. And by the way, Liz has tons of news for us because Liz is, well, you're also a filmmaker, right? You're an actor and you're the executive director of the Soho London Independent Film Festival, which has just been running very successfully. And uh, you've also just only completed your short film, Losing Grace, which is a very important message to share with the world. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it is. God, I sound a bit greedy for work there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a lot of work. I can't wait to, to talk about all of this because it's, it's really fascinating. I think they're both really important achievements. So about the festival, do you want to walk us a little bit through the history of it, how it happened? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. So the, the festival it has been a real passion project, actually, because um, the studio where I first started training and and learned sort of my filmmaking from really started in a place right in the heart of Soho in London called Zero One. And it's run by um, a man called Eric Moore. And Eric has for the last 16 years been holding like little screenings for filmmakers that are, you know, around London for things like, you know, when they've made a film and they want to do a technical screening or they, you know, want, want other to get more eyes on it before it goes and does festival runs. Yes, that's really important, actually. Mm. It's incredibly important because, you know, you can kind of lose your way sometimes when you're making a film because you've, you've yeah. seen it so many times. So he's always been very hands on about supporting filmmakers. And um, a few years ago, I had uh, myself and another guy, Stephen Carney, had had this idea about um, uh, setting up a TV channel where we could uh, promote uh, promote short films and independent filmmakers. And we we were discussing this, and we started discussing this with Eric. And we went, well, wouldn't a good way of doing that be through a film festival and that we could set it up and, and create this, this, whole, um, this whole industry of it. And, um, and anyway, Eric went, oh, well, I want to run a film festival. I've been talking about that and I've been trying to do it and it hasn't really happened. So um, I, I kind of bulldozed my way in there a little bit and went, right, okay, well, we're gonna have a film festival then and we're launching this year. <laughs> And I think no one sort of believed me really. And I just kind of went ahead and, and organized this, this event. And we got some films together of the quality of films that we wanted and, and had a big party. Do, do you remember those things when you actually could see real people? Uh, a party? <laughs> <laughs> Party. <laughs> oh my god, it feels like such a thing of the past. Yeah, we, we, we actually communicated with each other in real life. It was fabulous. <laughs> so true, but it's so true. There's a really good friend of mine, Natasha Marburger, who's also the director of the Los Angeles International Film Festival and of LEAF, the London Independent Film Festival. And in March, it was literally the last festival that ran worldwide, because I think the UK was one of the last countries also to, to go into lockdown. And we, we had such an amazing uh, European premiere of The Golden Age, my debut peer drama. And honestly, we, we had no idea at the time what we were heading to. It only happened a few days later. But it's so weird because now when we think about it, it sounds like a peer drama. I mean, in, in itself, like the actual event, because we were, you know, like there were people and drinks and... <laughs> And now we, this is great though, like I think, and I'm sure you agree, like I'm so thankful for all the wonderful technology and all we can do. And there are definitely some perks. It's just, it's, it's been quite of a shift, right? And yourself, you, you, run, you run the festival virtually, right? So how did, that, how did that come together? What was the process of like, at the beginning, you probably thought it's good, it was gonna be physical, just like the, the screenings you had done in the past. So what happened for you as an executive director to make those decisive steps? Well, it was first of all denial. Oh no, it'll <laughs> be fine. We'll be fine. We're gonna have you know. It, it, it's, it, we're not gonna have COVID. Not in Soho. <laughs> not in Soho. Soho yeah, is 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the border of Seoul, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it just stops right there. And, um, yeah, as the reality started to sink in, um, it was kind of like, oh my goodness, okay, we, what we didn't want to do was just kind of, I mean, these films that have been submitted to us were just incredible. They were, we really, the standard was just so, so high. And um, we wanted to make sure that they still got uh, the same attention and accolade that they deserved and that it needed to be something special. And that that was absolutely all the way through. We were not going to in any way take from that. So we didn't want to just whack it out on the internet or, you know, just cheapen it in any way. Oh, no, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so we actually we were very lucky. There was um, a, a lovely a lovely team, um, Senenso, who um, were were helping festivals to put things on on a virtual platform, and so we worked with them, and they helped us set it up so that it it was a proper festival with screenings, and um, and that we could you know have um, uh, people be able to come and join it that normally probably wouldn't have come to the festivals. Yes. You know, quite quite often it's very industry related, and um, you know, I mean, I, I expect you've had this before. Where you've got a film playing, and people go, "How do I see it?" And you're like, "We've well, got to go to the festival." But isn't there any other way? Well, not until the festival run finishes, <laughs> and so often people miss out on this. So we yeah. went, "Hmm, okay, this is interesting." So actually, we can really promote the filmmakers and get them known by people who love films and who watch films, but aren't the the usual film festival clientele yeah, and, absolutely yeah and we, we thought wow this is a really good way of, of promoting these filmmakers because I mean honestly the independent filmmakers that people have never heard of who are so talented you know yes, so, yes. yeah and, and we just feel like exposure that that's what we we, we went wow this, this is what we can do and this is very much for the future as well because we want to make sure that we do get those filmmakers out there and seen by everybody and give them the opportunities to be able to further their careers. So um, got very excited about this and, um, and we, we put together the, the festival. So we had it for a duration of, of four days. And what we did leading up to it was we got our filmmakers to actually come down to the studio, socially distanced. <laughs> but we, oh, we did- Oh yeah, I saw um, the pictures. That's really good. Yeah, we, 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 well, it was really nice because they were able to come down and talk about their films and also give their tips. Because if this had been happening in real person, we would have been doing masterclasses. We would have had a, a lot of workshops happening as well. Yes, yes. So, um, so we were able to put together um, like little reels too that people you know, could get information from and learn from. And we really hope that that has kind of made, made it feel, you know, bringing people together more. And, and it was lovely because it meant we could meet the filmmakers too and um, and make you know the public feel like they'd met them as well and really get the films out there and I mean we got lots and lots of people yeah it, I mean it was it was fabulous I mean we, we did the awards night live which was quite an experience it my, my bright <laughs> idea oh it live and interactive oh because that's not much work is it <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be easy <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was very fun it was very fun we filmed it from the studio and um we had like a green room with all our filmmakers in it and a green room with all our um judges who were announcing the awards and we it was great because we had um filmmakers and actors from all over the world come and accept their awards and wow. we had some uh, really uh, there were some quite incredible moments actually uh, the, um, which which was lovely so it did feel like a festival really happened that's wonderful and, um, and, and yeah it, it was it was really nice I mean I'm so looking forward to it being actually in person I cannot wait for it to be back in the cinema and oh we're and all looking forward to it for sure there. but it's good and also <laughs> Of course, this, this, this pandemic is really dangerous. So like the most important thing is to be safe and it will get back together. And yeah. 
what you mentioned first, congratulations. I think it's so wonderful to hear such positive stories and I've attended the festival too virtually and like, yeah, the platform was great. And honestly, like those films were incredible. And I think it's so wonderful to hear such how positive you are about this and because it's really important. And I think it's important for filmmakers who are watching or listening to really focus on what you can do. As a filmmaker myself, for instance, I have this short documentary that is filmed in New Delhi. I've actually realized it's just super exciting to know that, as you say, our audiences, then they can attend festivals they would not normally attend. And maybe as a filmmaker, also you can attend festivals you, you wouldn't normally attend. Like not saying I wouldn't have gone to India, but I think like this, this the exposure of this film is really international. It's not just for the UK, it's not just for France. And having it virtually can also be interesting. So you really have to think out of the box. And also it's quite incredible to see what technology enables us to do, right? Like on these festivals with the green room, I really like that idea, like that you can attend virtually and like, <laughs> it's oh, it, yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it's so fabulous what has happened. I mean, one of the things I love about filmmakers is their ingenuity. And you know what, sometimes stuff happens and it's out of your control. And if you just sit around yes. and go, oh my God, that's it. Oh no, well, nothing will happen. But I don't think anyone did that. In fact, we actually had a, a couple of films that we, that we played that made it into the festival that had been made during lockdown. And it was literally like, like one of them, um, the, uh, he, he had literally made it with his baby and had done animation and had like created this film. And it was great. It was really simple and really lovely, but he Aww. made a really good film and it, it went through and it, and it did really well. I, you know, people loved it. And we, we had um, another couple of girls, two actors, who of course, because I mean, as you know, as actors, it was kind of like, oh my God, what's happening? Yes. And, um, yeah, and these two, they, they wrote a little piece that was very funny and they filmed themselves. Uh, it was a telephone conversation, so it was socially distanced. They kept it very That's short. Amazing. But it, it was funny. They, they hit the marks. And, um, and I just, I love that because it's just going, okay, this is what's going on. What can we do about <laughs> <it>? <laughs> What's happening? There's a global pandemic out there. It's a sci-fi feature film right now. It's a bit long, a bit long feature film, but <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. And I agree with you. I think, honestly, I think it's phenomenal to see what we can do for technology. Also, admittedly, we're get, getting more and more used to it. So obviously, we can't wait to go back uh, to like ver or like real screenings and seeing each other in reality. At the same time, we kind of got educated to using Zoom. And so it's it's interesting to have both options and maybe in the future, we can still enjoy both and have a choice. That would be perfect. And what would, what? it sounds like your award ceremony was wonderful, but if you had to pick either a film or a great moment that you spend during the festival, what would it be? What was like the highlight? The, the highlight was the award night, actually. <laughs> it, 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 it really was because that we, we had all been working remotely other than when we'd done the interview yeah. in, but when we did the interviews we had a skeleton crew it, it was you know like about five of us um and you know we all had to be separated when we filmed the award night um I mean it was still god I think we did it with like nine of us in the studio I mean but poor Eric he set up the entire studio by himself I mean it was just bless him but um, but it was so fun to be doing it and to be doing it live and to be seeing the reactions of people receiving their awards and you know and also it was like at the end of it we were all just like we were jubilant because we're like we we did it because we, we're all filmmakers you know, we, we all love this and are passionate about it. And when the, the whole pandemic first happened, it was so like, um, we were like, oh my God, we, we want to deliver what we promised. You know, we, we'd wanted to really, you know, the, the festival right from the beginning, the whole ethos of it is about supporting filmmakers, about giving them the opportunity to, to be able to make the best films they can. I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the things that we we did this year that um, which we will be able to expand on more, but people who put their films in who didn't get in 
but we saw potential. We were like, you know, we, we, we could see what they were trying to do, could see that they've got it, but there was just things like technical stuff that they just didn't know or mistakes that they'd made. Rather than just saying, oh, you haven't got in, we actually wrote to them and, and talked to them about why they didn't get in. And when, when we are able to, we're actually getting them in to screen their films with a group of more experienced filmmakers to nurture them and show them how to improve it so that they will get in next time. And we yes. actually have... We, we did have one film who we, we gave the feedback to and they went and did it and their film we played. That's, so, that's, I love to hear this type of stories. Thanks so much for sharing this because it's so yeah. important and also it's important to see how as a filmmaker you also grow. Like it's it's like, um, how do you say it in English? It's like a marathon, but the re no, it's a long course, but with a rhythm of a marathon. So you, of course, we work a lot, so it's it's not like we want to make it all at the same time. But at the same time, it's really exciting to understand that you can go through these steps, right? And you yeah. can improve and get back, and it's building a relationship. And you selected it, and that's phenomenal. That's a super success story. Oh, it, it was. Do you know what? It was really nice because all of us have submitted to film festivals, and sometimes you just get a no, and you're a bit kind of like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> and, <laughs> And I mean, it's the same as an actor, isn't it? You go and do an audition and, and you think, oh, I nailed that. And you walk out and you never hear from them again. And you're kind of like, oh, OK. And then you do another one and you think, oh, my God, I was terrible. And they call you back again. That was brilliant. You've got the job. And it's, it's kind of, it, you know, it, this industry, it isn't like working in a shop where, you know, you, you know that if they buy the product, then you've got the money in the till or, you know, it, it's, it's an industry where actually... It, there are so many things that you can learn and grow with, but you need to be told. You need someone to say, actually that yes. worked or that didn't. And if nobody tells you, how are you gonna learn? And so we just thought, do you know what? That's what this is. This is the ethos of our festival is that it's about nurturing filmmakers. And that's in front of the camera as well. You know, our actors, we're also, we're supporting. We, we were held before lockdown, we were holding workshops for actors as well which um, was working with a, um, a fabulous filmmaker and giving you know, them the opportunity to come and, and work out of the busy studio, doing some like improv work and, and working with, with someone who's making films and also giving them the opportunity to meet other filmmakers. That's very and, important, yeah. Yeah, and, and we, we want to be doing that. We want to be getting and bringing everyone together so that, you know, because there's a lot of people out there who slip through the net because they don't have the contacts, you know, or can't afford these. For sure. Pricey, That's you know, most people. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of very expensive ways of, of learning your craft. And we're kind of like, well, do you know what? We've got a group of people. It's a creative hub where, where we work out of. And we're like, well, Let's bring everyone in. Let's all create together. And that's the best. I think that's the best way to learn at the end of the yeah. day. Like just to, because at the same time, with what you say, with such a creative hub, you learn your craft. You also probably grow, thrive in yourself and you build relationships. And it's really like cinema really is about all these things, right? You really need to grow it all. Kind of at the same time. Yes. It's really impressive. And festivals, like I've always thought this, but I... I, I, I'm sure I will never change my mind about this. It's like, it's incredible to see how important festivals are because they really bridge the gap between you as a filmmaker and the distribution world. So it's a very, very important step. And also, as you say, someone can tell you, so that could be your audience. Because at the end of the day, as a filmmaker, you're doing films for your audience. So it's like, it's great to see their reactions. And it's also really, really thriving when you realize how much they love your film like maybe they won't even have so many bad reactions you know maybe it's just going to be really really positive it's really good to see what works and what you can improve and just also kind of grow yourself as a filmmaker and see the kind of stories you love because something i've realized and like audiences they're also craving for new stories this is why i think it's such an exciting time for film and filmmakers because the reason why um audiences haven't necessarily watched so many films made by females are not because they don't want to hear them it's just because they're waiting for them and it's really good i think it's also about your passion if you if there is a message you really care about 
uh, and you speak about it with a lot of enthusiasm and positivity, they love to hear it. And it's also what we love as an audience, right? Being surprised and educated and entertained. And so this is actually a really nice transition to your film. So <laughs> I'm really glad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your film has a really, really important message and it's also really, really female led. Uh, both behind the camera and in front of camera. So I'm really excited to talk about it. Please, can you tell us about Losing Grace, your short film? Of course, yeah. So Losing Grace um, is a project that um, started working on a couple of years ago. And um, when I originally uh, created the story, we were, we were looking at um, abuse about children um, who, getting groomed and, and it actually started out looking at cults actually but as we did research and started meeting um uh, meeting different women and, and building relationships and things we found that there is an absolutely massive massive problem um with women being listened to and believed when they are, are in abusive relationships and we we weren't going directly just to the the violent relationships it was like the coercive control and the problem is is that narcissists come across as the most charming lovely wonderful people you will ever meet and for sure when you've got someone saying, oh my god and yeah when you've, you've got someone saying no i'm being abused and they're all scatty and they're all um you know sleep deprived and you know they, they appear, for want of a better word, a bit mad. And then you've got this lovely, calm narcissist going, oh, she's a little bit mad. Oh, dear, you know. I don't. And the problem is, is that the services haven't been trained to deal with this. But then we also found another massive problem was you would have situations where a woman was being abused and was going to, to ask for help and having the social services say, right, you've got to leave. If you don't leave, we're taking your children. So they would leave. And then we had the family courts going, well, you're, this is par parental alienation. You've got to give your children back. And it's awful. It's, it's awful. so shocking. And what we discovered, we, we sort of started scratching the surface of this. And as we scratched the surface, it was just this huge, massive, it, it is insane. And there has been children murdered countless amounts of children murdered by abusive parents that have been forced by the family courts to have the children given to them despite the the, the abused saying they're violent they're dangerous they're this they're that and no one's listened to them and the law has been so unfair I mean it, it's just shocking and there's some brilliant platforms um the court said they are absolutely amazing. A lovely woman, Natalie. Uh, she's actually um, helping and supporting women. And it, it's just, it reads like films. In fact, you, you, you look at it and you go, my God, that if I saw that in a film, I'd be like, no, that can't be true because no one could do that. But it's not just here in the UK. It's happening right the way around the Western world, funnily enough. Um, and... Um, it's shocking. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to write a film that was actually about what happens afterwards. So the the mother is fleeing from an abusive relationship, but what happens when nobody believes you? What would you do if your child was being abused and you were told to hand your child to the abuser? And we wanted people to look at it from a very different point of view. And it's, I, I don't want to give the story away. <laughs> but Brilliant. It's, yeah, it's, it's very it's much, we, we, we're looking at it, it we, we're putting it out in a way where um, the authorities look at it, the people that are supposed to be supporting and helping and not going into it too much and we we're um, we're working with a couple of charities as well the mental abuse matters um so yeah and the um safe strong secure have also supported us too and we um we want this film to actually be used to to get some traction and, and help facilitate change um the other thing we did with it as well was um we made this with mostly women and um wow. Yeah, and we, we, right from the beginning, we wanted to do that because, um, like you said before, the, you know, 
films being made by women people want to see it and there's not enough out there and it's not because there aren't any women it's not because they're not talented it's because of the funding it's really they're not given the same opportunity and something that really does happen a lot and especially with short film um which is where you cut your teeth where you get experience and then with that experience you then go on to get the paid jobs and um so often what happens is those films where you get the experience they go to the men that are in the better paid jobs who can afford to take the time off to work you know, to do that for free which then puts them in a stronger position to get the better paid jobs and you know more often than not it's women that are in caring um jobs you know that, that have to look after their children or elderly parents or you know it, it just is that way and so they can't turn around and go oh I'll, I'll take a week off and do this for free and um, they have to um they have to be paid so we we had a, a massive mission raising money because we said everyone's got to be paid we can't let anybody slip through the net we have to have the very best you know, we're not going to just give someone a, a position for this, you know, oh, it's a woman. They have to be the very best, but we've got to make sure they can do it, that they don't have to turn it down because they can't afford to. And we were overwhelmed at the amount of incredible women out there that can do all these positions. And, um, and it was just brilliant. And it was the most amazing team. And do you know what? It was Oh, it was such a lovely set to work on with this big group of fabulous women. We did have some men as well. We didn't just go like <laughs> only women, but it, but it was lovely. And the lovely thing about it, because obviously it's, it's a film looking very much at, at, at women being controlled, well, two women being controlled, a child and, and a mother. Mm. But going and working on that set, this, this lovely young lady who played Grace, um, she got to work on a set where she just saw all women heads of departments, all these strong women doing this, this important film. And it wasn't talked about. We weren't sort of like, oh, we're all women. We just all got on with it. But yeah. it was so lovely because it was like, you know what? This is how it should be. It shouldn't yeah. be. I mean, the amount of sets that I've worked on where it's all men, you might have one woman on there and no one bats an eyelid at that. And that's not right. It shouldn't be like that. And um, yeah, so it, it was it was a wonderful experience. And along the way, we've made some fabulous relationships with women who've been through these absolutely a- atrocious experiences. And that's they have terrible. become empowered. And um, a wonderful woman, Marsha, um, who actually let us film in her house. And she also um, what was a became a, a um, associate producer she her story is just beyond shocking it's just absolutely I mean the system could not have let her down more and actually it was very empowering because all these oh, yeah. women, terrible things happened made this film big strong group of women made this film that's powerful and it's got a powerful important message and is going to bring about change and has done already actually I, I know a lot of people we've had some wonderful responses from it from people just saying god finally I'm being listened to yes exactly I think this is really really inspiring and it's also a message we don't hear about so much and it's it's a shame we need to talk about it because as you say it's, it's a lot about education at the end of the day, right? Because as you say, someone can be really, really charming and really, really abusive. So you need to know, because if you don't know, you're, gonna, you're not necessarily going to see it with your own eyes or maybe yeah. it takes time to really realize that, I guess. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the problem is as well, is that when abuse gets talked about, so often it's talked about as just the violent bit. And if you've never experienced it, it's kind of, which is a very rare thing because it's you speak to pretty much every single woman and they've got some story it, I mean it just seems to be every single woman you speak to goes oh god will this happen to me or but um yeah. it, you know that the thing is this controlling and coercive control is is the most dangerous one because you can't see it. it's a little bit like the virus actually you can't see that it's, it's yes. catching you know but it's, it's really dangerous yeah, yeah. and and yeah. the thing is it it wears you down. So if you're in that strong, great place surrounded by good people, if someone came along and, and you know did something horrible to you, you'd know that that wasn't right. 
But if you've been worn down and worn down and worn down and these things become normal, you're suddenly so far down in it and they separate you as well. They, they you know, they slowly make it so that you don't trust anyone else or you can't have friends around. So you don't have those support networks and that they just strip away, strip your self-confidence away, your self-belief and, and make you think you're mad. You know, the whole gaslighting. Yeah. It's um, so th this is it's really important because I mean, they did make a law to make it illegal, but no one understands it. We've had countless women say that in the family court, the judges, the one judge who makes the decision for everybody's life. But I won't talk about that now. But um, but yeah, who turn around and go, well, I, I don't know what gaslighting is. I don't recognize it. You're like, well, what's the point of making a law if you don't know what it is? Yeah, gaslighting, yeah, it's a very big problem. It's pr pretty close to what you're describing, right? Abusive, um, mental abuse. It's it's really important to detect that. And yeah, I feel indeed definitely educating. And this is what you're doing too, right? With your film, Losing Grace, you, you educate your audience and you, you have an opportunity to discuss this. And that must also be really liberating for all the women that have gone through this right because it, it sounds like it's super scary and obviously when you have children it can only get worse because you want to protect them so it's really difficult and it's yeah it's it's well, that yeah. and I, if you can change the law that would bring change and that would that would make such a huge difference well that is the master plan that's you know we we absolutely um and we've we've got some charities that are working with us and want to use this film to help with that because the thing is as well what what we've done with the film rather than go down the sort of um the route of, of making it very hard to watch or documentary style or anything we've gone down the route of making it a story where you can actually step into her shoes you know where you can be in there and along the way and That's and great. you know and and question what would i do if that was me you know would would i hand my child over would i you know what what would i do because what one thing that we've had as well um a lot of women have said if they'd known the way that the system had abused them what would abuse them they they would have stayed with their abuser it would have been better if they'd stayed with their abuser because even though they were being abused they could have protected their child better than when they left and the the system abused them and supported the abuser now yes. that is terrible yes that is absolutely yes. terrible that feel like that so it's really important that we look at this from a different a different perspective and a different point of view and and let other women know that actually this is a thing because I, I pretty much everyone thinks it's only happened to them you know when it's happening they think that it's me I'm mad especially women we're, we're terrible for blaming ourselves for things you know it's you know something happens and we'll always look to ourselves what could I have done better what you know so um it yeah it's, it's really about empowering and supporting and shining a light on this and, and making positive change through something entertaining that's wonderful. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's wonderful, especially as we're we're into the pandemic. Also, these stories cannot get better, right? So we need to highlight and we need to share the spotlight on it and discuss it. As you say, yeah, I agree. I think um women in particular, you are we probably tend a lot more to to share ourselves or whatever. And so it's all about education and knowledge is power. Like really it's about um being independent. And that also comes through mental independence and understanding your worth and also what you can do, because we can do so much. <laughs> <If we're Yeah. laughs> Honestly, it's a, yeah, so I, I think it's it's wonderful. And it's so wonderful that also with your own festival, you also shed the spotlight on other filmmakers' film and you do both. I think it's really, it's really inspiring to see how much you can do, right? Because you, you've screened such great films and you also have your own film to tell your own message, which is really important because it's the message of many, many, many women, people out there. That's really, really important. So what's the next step for, for Losing Grace? Um, you've just completed the film, right? Yes, we've just completed it. And um, so now what we will, ugh, sorry, I can't speak. What we will be doing <laughs> is um, it will start its festival run. So we're going to start entering it into film festivals. And um, and yeah, it will be um, be going around doing doing that, which is really exciting. And um, and it will also as well, we'll be uh, working with um, with this charity, Mental Abuse Matters. And wow. um, yeah, and we, we're, we're looking 
yeah we're, we're just kind of like tell us what what to do we, we you know tell, tell yes, us what yes. to just help and support i'm sure there's so much yeah. about it's like you know how films they have such a, a huge impact on their audiences and there's no there's no wonder why uh, there are so many marketing also product placements for films because we know it's 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 a great way to just spread the message and yeah. it's definitely the type of things we need to see more in there <laughs> it's wonderful no, that you, you've associated with them oh no this is great and people can watch the trailer if they want to as well uh, there um uh, we've got we've got our website losinggrace.com and the trailer is on there and I, i'm sure if people just google Losing Grace, it, it will it will come up. Losing Grace film, actually, my apologies. Losinggracefilm.com and the trailer's on on there. But um, but yeah, we hope it will do something really important. <laughs> that, that's that sounds really really important and really unique. And we're gonna run seeing it. And also we will put all the details and the website in the trailer of Losing Grace in the details of uh, this episode, so everyone can tune in because that sounds like such an important film. And there's a last question we love uh, asking all our, our lovely guests like you is just talking about international. How, what, what do you think about Paris? Has Paris inspired you? Have you ever visited? Oh, have I ever visited? I go to France every year. I love ah! Paris, absolutely love oh Paris. It, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. And, you know, film, you know, you have incredible film over there. You make wonderful yes. films. Yeah. Yes, and also it's so inspiring. And yeah, like some French films, French cinema in general is wonderful, but like every year we receive such wonderful French films too. And a lot of international, it's a very international festival. And I'm so proud that we can through Paris, shine not only the city, but just the wonderful work from these filmmakers from everywhere in the world, because it's always been a very welcoming city and really shedding the spotlight on change is really, really rewarding, just as we do with your short. And we can't, we can't wait to consider your short, like Losing Great sounds like such an amazing art piece and really bringing change and poor lazy deeds behind them. And as you say, it should be normal. Like we, we really received such amazing female filmmakers work and we're really excited it's going to be very much about parity, which is great. It's the way to go. Like, we really need to shed a light on this. And I really, I really appreciate all you've been doing, like, seriously. And you have such a big smile on your face. And this is really, <laughs> really, really, really exciting. Like, I can't wait to fly to London so we can just have a glass of French wine. And, and I like the sound of this. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so cool. laughs> It was really, really good. Thank you so much, Liz. Merci beaucoup. And we, we can't wait to watch the trailer of Losing Grace. Oh, thank you so, so much. Thank you for having me. Merci.